believe in the responsibility undertaken by these doctors because they took up the solemn faith, solemn vow to save their patient. Okay, brothers, uh, medical insurance is mandatory in our life. And don't get this funny idea that we are denying death. No, death will come. That's the only thing that is definite. Death is definite. Everything else may not be definite, you know, but death is definite. So Allah said, Wa'bud Rabbaka hatta yaktiyaka al-yaqeen. Worship your Lord until it comes to you, yaqeen, a certainty, a.k.a. death. That's according to the ulama tafsir, yaqeen means death. It is, you must worship Allah until you die. So it is true, but again, we are now in a totally different time than it was during the time of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. During the time of Nabi, the, whenever you are healing, the the use the method we call as kai, a hot burning iron, and then they will just rub it on the skin to cure whatever ailment you are having. But now it doesn't happen like that. Even sometimes when you are totally very very sick. Even eating haba soda may not help you. I mean, when you're already at your third stage of cancer, you must be written as a as a supplement, daily supplement. Sakit, bukan meninggal, baru bukan haba soda. It doesn't make sense much. But uh, but as I said, I feel personally is grief that the couple or Islamic insurance is taken off the market. And we uh, scholars uh, in Islamic banking say that if you don't have any alternative to takaful, then you can take up the conventional policy. When you don't have an alternative or something equal to takaful, then you can take up the conventional alternative, yeah, to safeguard yourself during time of disability or sickness and so on and so forth. So for you to take uh, up medical insurance is uh, what we call as darura. And since you don't have the uh, equivalent of takapol here, the only thing we can find is only medical uh, insurance. Take it up. Inshallah, Allah knows best. And the idea of taking up the, uh, insurance is not to become rich. It's actually to cushion you during that moment of disability and loss of income or death. Right? So if that is offered to us, Alhamdulillah, we knew how the insurance, convention insurance company operate. They operate just like bank. They are just another licensed moneylender. They take money from policyholders. They invest, possibly in brewery, casino, whatever. Because to them there's no whole power. Everything's halal. They can give loan and they charge interest. And from there, they give you your what? your compensation but Allah forbids what can we do this so far there's no alternative to uh, takaful so we will we are forced to take up such but we can only take it up with only fear in Allah and asking Allah to forgive us if we have transgressed his limits but what can we do there's no other alternative other than the present conventional uh, medical insurance Success, dunya we is at times put above spiritual success. How to overcome dilemma? Success, dunya we is at times put above spiritual success. How to overcome? Brother, don't uh, separate dunya from akhirah. This dunya is our benchmark, our stage, our bridge to cross over to the other side. I've seen people who forsake the dunya. So they say dunya is curse. So they want to lead a life of poverty, life of isolation, what called the life of a darwish, a wanderer, wearing woolen clothes, walking, not kawin. Kawin very nice, no? Not kawin wrong here. Yeah? Staying in the cave, in the mountains. They make themselves so skinny until the, the skin uh, touches the, the, the belly inside. So so thin, pencil thin model, you know. Brother, Nabi Muhammad led a moderate life. Even your dunya we life can also be a means of ibadah. Don't you think so? You execute the law of transaction according to Allah's law. It benefited you dunya we way, 
and also is an ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. You, uh, you, deal, you deal with your client politely. You give a smile. It's sadaqah, you know? You respect others. One day I was having a majlis iftar, and it was about five minutes before azan, and the brani dulang right in front of me, the tray. And next to me was a non-Muslim MP. So I scoop brandy for him. Another guy behind said, Ustaz, jangan sentuh untuk dia lah, dia tak Islam lah, dia tak puasa. I said, no, not like that. Akhlaq, brother, akhlaq. Mayuridillahu bi khairan, mankana yuminu billahi wal yawmil akhir, fal yukrim daifa. Those who believe in Allah and the day of judgment, respect his guests. When I respect my guests, it's ibadah, you know. Don't you think so? Ibadah. The guests, Allah is say, say the Muslim guests, no. Any guests, I tell you. So that, you can call dunya meeting, but it gives me a great ibadah, you know, great uh, core. Nabi Muhammad said, in one of my sightings, I saw a man occupying a very big paradise, no. And I asked Jibril, how did he get his paradise? Jibril said, he did what called imatatul adha anit tarif. He saw something dangerous on the street, and he put it aside, and then he got a big paradise, you know. MashaAllah. That's not on the tikah semayang. And don't, that's not holding tasbih. You just care for people who are passing that path, but broken glass, I put it aside. Your paradise is so big, you know. So therefore, brother, don't differentiate your dunya and akhirah because this dunya is our crossing, our cultivation. Whatever you do in this dunya, it may seem non-religious, but in the eyes of Allah, it's ibadah and sadaqah, right? So therefore, brothers, uh, do for the total akhlaq of Nabi, it's a balance of dunya and akhirah. Inshallah, you will not uh, put extra weight in your uh, akhirah because you know what you are doing in the dunya is ibadah also. Thank you. Do you know what question is ten dollars? <laughs> you don't know. Okay, just remind them. Uh. <coughs> How do we defend Prophet's marriage to child bride Aisha? These people, uh, I have uh, been approached many hundreds of times. They kept asking such questions. Yeah. Why Aisha married, um, Nabi married a young girl? Number one, I said, you need not worry because Aisha is not your daughter. <laughs> Abu Bakr willingly gave Aisha, and Aisha consented. Is it a problem? No problem, right? Unless Aisha was forced. Abu Bakr didn't consent. Nabi Muhammad bawa lari ya kidnap Aisha. Aisha forced into the marriage. Like what happened in some country. Child marriage. And she didn't like it. Or people sold their child to a rich man. So that they can be happily ever after. Got money from the old son-in-law. But this, is, this was not even a crime. Aisha was a little genius. She was more mature than her age. You talk about six or nine years old, but her maturity far more superseded her age. She knew what she was going into. She consented and she loved to be wedded to Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And never once Nabi ill-treated her. Never once. She was treated like a king. Rani, you know. You know Rani? Raja Quran from Sepia Bogia. Rani, you know. Queen, you know. What, how will a young child be treated? Usually, sex object. Nabi carried her on his shoulder, you know. Your husband carried you on his shoulder. <laughs> Try, bang, you love me or not? Carry me, me, like Aisha. She was so respected, accorded that high honor. You see? And Aisha was so sad when Nabi passed away. Yes? And she had so much thing to talk about 
all goodness of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it was suka sama suka, and that is better than you keeping concubines. People accepted keeping concubine. What orang Indonesia bilang kekasih gelap kan? Kekasih gelap kan? Itu kekasih gelap. Secretly having married extra married affairs. That one's okay. Ya? Prostitution okay. Ya? Men many men okay. Woman marry woman okay. Child slavery okay. Nabi kawin Aisyah, Aisyah consented, Abu Bakar consented. The whole of the Arab society accepted. Ya? No problem for that kind of generation. They were accepted. No problem what? They didn't complain. They love it. They saw the proof that Nabi loved Aisha so much. Aisha loved Nabi Sosam so much. He even died on the lap of Aisha. He even died on the lap of Aisha. If you want to die, huh? Chota Dynasty, huh? Young, I want to die on your lap, huh? Just like Nabi died on the lap of Aisha. So loving, you know. People accepted Romeo and Juliet. They were underage, teenage. And after that, they end up staying together, staying together, Zina or whatever we don't know, and they end up committing suicide. That story is glorified. Glorified, no? Even though God lagu, uh, Romeo and Juliet, uh, become legendary, you know. But you know the story, you know? Very bad, no? Not with parental consent, they were teenagers, they cohabit, and they committed suicide. That's tragic, eh? and yet they call it as the ultimate love story. Eh? I tell you, the ultimate love story has to be Nabi and Aisha and all the wives of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Satisfied? Okay? Thank you so much. Sir, I would like to ask, how do we respond to non-Muslims? Who questions about fellow brothers and sisters who sometimes do unlawful things, such as drinking alcohol or not wearing the hijab. Nabi says, "Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayyiru fal yughayyiru bi yadi, wa in lam yastati fa bi lisani, wa in lam yastati fa bi qalbihi, wa dalika ataqul iman." Those amongst you who see evil being done must correct it with your hand. Also, power. Whatever is in your hand. If he can't, then with his thumb, advice. That's what we are thinking about. Number three, if you can't, then your heart must dislike it. You see, an evil happening, and you were so helpless uh, to correct if your hand cannot, to speak your tongue cannot, and your heart simply don't like it, uh, that's a sign that we are at the stage of al iman, the weakest level of iman. But what is worse than when you see a uh, suka hati dia means you have got zero iman. The looker who saw an evil committed and he bocap tak peduli. Don't care. Itu dia jawab sendiri ya. You don't care at all. We in our heart is at zero iman. Can you see? So that is actually the second last level of a person. No iman lah, lagi habis. Yes? So therefore, brother, I had the same experience many, many years ago. It was 10 Ramadan ago. I was at that time very handsome, good looking, green eyes, V-shaped body. I went to Gelang Sarai, I saw some uncle drinking anji cow. A, B, C, gambar anjing. Yeah? I came Pachi, Walaan Ramadan Pachi, Jangan Belum Ara, Hormat. You know what he said? Buddha, kau nampak ni botol? Aku lempar kepala kau. I was scared when I woo. Can I jump on her? But then I knew that was how difficult Nabi Muhammad was making his dawah. I only got threat, uh, the guy will throw me with the with the bottle. I said, Kerap Pakpala Pacha, how to celebrate Hari Raya? I was concerned what? Worried about Hari Raya. Not worried about whether this dawah can come across or not. But of course I did. I knew it was not easy. Brother, you can call, but don't think you are the giver of Hidayah. That's why Nabi tried very best to correct his uncle Abu Talib, even make dua for him, ask forgiveness for him, but yet Allah says, you cannot give Hidayah to whomsoever you like, because it's in the hands of Allah. So Abu Talib died 
of course, through uh, after having getting constant dakwah from Nabi, the best pendakwah ever lived on.